a glad good morning as we begin our worship this day. I invite those who are able to join in the responsive call to worship. Please rise if you are able. <clears throat> we have been invited to know God. We have been invited to bear God's justice. Let us enter the justice of God. We have been invited to enter God's truth. Let us enter the truth of God. We have been invited to enter God's unity. Let us enter the unity of God. Let us unite our voices as we sing the hymn, When Morning Gilds the Skies. After our service today, we're going to meet in the fellowship hall and have a conversation on yoking. And as I announced last week, on June 12th, Richard Blood from our presbytery will conduct a short sermon and then we'll have questions and answers regarding yoking. The presbytery has a certain protocol, sorry about that, that we need to follow so he can answer best. So come with your questions, and it's not a yoking agreement, but it's what both churches can contribute if we decide to yoke. It would be a yoking draft, okay? And if anyone knows of anybody that has expressed an interest to minister to our church, just let Lois know, and she'll take care of it. She'll send it to the presbytery. And our annual congregational meeting will be July 10th. Now, I know we have other announcements while they're coming up. Lori Tim will be at the back of the church after the service to answer 
any questions about the foundation fighting blindness and to accept any donations. Did I say that right? Sorry, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> Good morning, I have just a couple announcements. I want to remind everyone that Women's Fellowship is meeting every Tuesday and Thursday from now until fleas are to bake cookies for worker bee lunches and to bake pies. But for pies, we need pie filling. So please, when you're shopping, pick up a few extra cans of pie filling and bring them into the church. We will find them and remember that um, Lots of pie filling means lots of pies. Second thing I want to talk about is coffee hour. We are, uh, I think, a very warm and welcoming and loving church. And our congregation loves to get together and talk with old friends and meet new ones. One of the best ways we do that is through coffee hour. But it can't happen if you don't sign up. So we have coffee today, thanks to Mid Sharp. But we've got two Sundays coming up before Father's Day that are not filled, and there's nothing signed up for after Father's Day. So please consider that also. Thank you. Carolyn Pfeiffer isn't here today, but she was talking about name tags last week. And I was just talking to Joe Sanksby for the service, and he does have a pacemaker, and he called his doctor and asked him. And you can have the... <laughs> You're just messing with me today, aren't you? <laughs> you can have the magnetic ones as long as they're six inches away from the pacemaker. Right, Joe? Okay. So any other announcements? We like to greet visitors. If you feel comfortable standing up and giving us your name and where you're from over here. Not going to introduce that baby. <laughs> That's the father. <laughs> Anybody over here? There? Okay, don't forget to sign the friendship ritual pad and just have a good day. <laughs> <laughs>
Here ends the reading. It's not Carl's fault that he's having trouble with the sound this morning. It's because somebody moved this. It should not ever be touched up here. It should be in line with this parallel, with the side. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Even if you're short? Yeah. Even if you, it's going to pick you up. But if you get too close to it, then Carl has a real problem. So, you know, he's a skilled man. He's a professional. <laughs> and, we <clears throat> and we do thank Carl for um, sharing in the, this particular aspect of our ministry for worship. <clears throat> I would now invite you to Turn in the bulletin to our prayer of confession as we come in that spirit before God. We pray together. Creating God, in selfishness and insecurity, we have traded your healing for our hatred, your calling for our comfort, your truth for our traditions, your covenant for our conventions, your faithlessness for our fragmentation, your care for our convenience, your solidarity for our self-righteousness, your promise for our praise. Forgive us, we pray. Speak to us again of your love, that we may know you, and by knowing you, may may once again be made whole. Amen. I invite you to hear these words of assurance. Beloved of God, hear the good news. God's love never fails. Even in our division and despair, God desires to be made known. And in that knowledge, we know that we are forgiven, we are welcome, and we are one. Thanks be to God. Amen. I have too many books up here. This morning, I'm t the gospel reading for this Sunday is taken from the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John. If you are familiar with this particular portion of the gospel, it's, it's a very long and extended a time that Jesus has with his disciples at the Last Supper. And there's, John is a, is a real... In, uh, deep theologian, and so it, it's kind of hard sometimes to hear all that is packed into these um, particular verses. I will read a portion, uh, the last portion of the 17th chapter, beginning at the 20th verse. So this is Jesus praying. I ask not only be on behalf of these but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, 
but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. May we be blessed to know our unity in God and God's love for all of us, for the sake of the world. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to have to take a little drink of water before <laughs> I begin. I will tell you right now that this is not the sermon that I planned to preach today. A school massacre in Uvalde, Texas, in which 19 children and two teachers were killed, intervened and shifted my thoughts and my feelings, as I am sure is true for all of you as well. The morning after the murders, all I could picture were my two grandsons, ages nine and 10 years old, the same ages as many of the children who died. John and Ted were heading off to school with, along with their mom, who teaches kindergarten. I dissolved into tears, sorry, that I even had to consider that my grandsons and my daughter-in-law might not come home from school. But we need to do more than weep and pray. There needs to be action in the form of some reasonable gun legislation especially regarding assault weapons, whose purpose is to kill as many people in the shortest period of time. After Sandy Hook, there were renewed efforts at limiting access to these powerful and deadly weapons. Since Sandy Hook 10 years ago, there have been 950 school shootings. That number is staggering. 27 of those have already occurred in the last 21 weeks in our country. In the United States, kids are more likely to die from gun violence than in any other wealthy country. Those numbers disturb me and I hope they trouble you as well. I know that I want to live in a country that loves its children more than it loves its guns. A pastoral colleague shared a reflection written by Anne Lamont, who frequently writes on Christian themes. And he was hoping that some of her thoughts could help all of us as we grieved this horrible event. And so I share Anne Lamont's reflection this morning. There are no words. There is no hope, not today. We see Christ crucified in Texas, and all we can do now is not turn away. We look to see who around us most needs help. I hold to my deepest belief that grace bats last. I experienced the shootings at Sandy Hook as the actual end of the world, evil made visible. There were no answers that day, the next day, or the day after that. But then slowly, life began to make sense again. Life, death, rebirth, the ultimate truth. Hope returned against all odds, <clears throat> eventually, because love is bigger than any horrors 
and barbarity that the world can throw at us. We will have hope again because of this love. What was helpful right away was that we stuck together in our horror, our grief, our anxiety, and our cluelessness. We grieved for families for whom this will remain the end of their world. We cried or shut down, we blamed, despaired, raged, prayed, gathered in community, or isolated. I recommend that we do this today, she writes. Some of us couldn't eat at all, and some of us binged. Some of us couldn't turn off the TV, and some of us couldn't turn it on. Those were all appropriate. We talked, spewed, cried, and stuck together. Talking and sticking together are the answer. We were gentler, more patient and kind with each other. And that's a small miracle. It means something of the spirit is at work. For me, that is grace made visible. It doesn't come immediately or by a bumper sticker, and it doesn't come naturally. What comes naturally is rage and blame. Blame are us. So when we could, after Sandy Hooked, we paused, breathed, sighed, gasped at the rising numbers. 400 million guns out there in the US. Nothing changed legally, not one word, but we never gave up and we won't now. Hearts healed imperfectly. People even danced again, eventually, with limps. But it takes time. So I hate this and do not agree to this, but have no alternative. Because it is truth. It will take time. And in the meantime, always, 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 we take care of one another. We're at the beginning of human and personal evolution. Whole parts of the world don't even think that women are people. So now, after an appropriate time of being stunned in despair, we sigh and help each other back to our feet. Maybe we ask God for help. We do the next right thing. We register voters. Maybe we march. We buy or cook a bunch of food for the local homeless. We return phone calls, library books, and smiles. We donate money. We practice radical self-care. And we say hello gently to everyone even strange, lonely people who scare us. It can't be enough, but it will be. She concludes, I have no answers, but no one last thing that is true. Figure it out is a bad slogan. Life is much wider, wilder, sweeter, heartbreaking, weirder, richer, more insane, beautiful and profound than we were prepared for as children or that I am comfortable with. The paradox is that in the face of this, we discover that in the smallest moments of taking in beauty, in actively being people of goodness and mercy and outreach, we are saved. And I believe that that is the message of our gospel this morning. It brings us to this passage from the Gospel of John, where Jesus is at table with his disciples for the last time. And he assures them, and he assures us, that with one of the best pieces of good news in the good news, Jesus prays for us. In Paul's letter to the Romans, 
He writes, if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very same Spirit intercedes with sighs, too deep for words. And what does Jesus pray for us? He prays for protection, for unity, and for joy. In the tasks given to the early church and passed down to us, we need this assurance that God does not desert us in a hostile world. Because of the radical nature of the gospel and the equally radical nature of grace, we are not to be overwhelmed by our responsibility to speak the truth, to work for justice for all, to be agents of change, to be people of goodness and mercy. Jesus prays for us that we might be unified with his spirit and that we might go and continue the work that was started. We know that we are not all the same people, but the prayer is that we will have a unity of spirit and we will have a unity of purpose, even while we have varied gifts and functions. One author has written, Jesus does not pray that we might all become the same. He's not a master cookie cutter in the kingdom's kitchen. Jesus prays for our unity and envisions Christian believers attached to that one true vine, which is Jesus. And then the last part of the prayer is for us to have completeness in our joy. What joy there should be for all of us to know that Jesus is praying for us. The author of the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, which we'll we be singing in a few moments, Joseph Scriven was devastated by his fiancée's drowning on the eve of their wedding. And so at the age of 25, he immigrated from Ireland to Ontario, Canada, where he endeavored to live out his life according to the precepts of the Sermon on the Mount. Most of his life, he lived in the home of friends and neighbors, and he spent much of his time doing menial chores for the sick and the dying. Hardly menial. He wrote this hymn for his mother in her time of sorrow. And during Scriven's last illness, a friend came across the hymn and asked, did you write this hymn? And Scriven replied, the Lord and I did it between us. Here is peace and hope and courage as we work for justice. Jesus prays for us. We know that there is much for us to do in our work of being people of goodness and mercy and outreach. And capital letters, bold letters, we have Jesus' own promise that throughout our efforts at goodness, mercy, and outreach, Jesus prays for us. That is the good news, folks. May it be so. Amen. And let us now join our voices as we sing um, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
You may be seated. And at this time, I invite us to offer our special needs and concerns, joys, celebrations. And I think it works better rather than kind of moving all over to just do it by section. So if you do have a prayer request, when it's your turn, raise your hand and say it, and then we'll move across the sanctuary. I have a... <laughs> I have a light right in my face. There we go. That's better. Any special requests from this section? Choir? Mitch? Um, my friend Josh is having had surgery, and I hope he recovers quickly. Josh? Mm -hmm. Friend Josh recovering from surgery? Good, good recovery prayers? Mm -hmm. And Margo? Okay, prayers for Troy, who's battling with brain cancer. Any others in this section? How about as I move here? No, I don't have that light. Yes, Sharon. Prayers of thanks for all of the served Yes, prayers of thanks for all who have served. For Allie June, our new granddaughter. Oh, a new granddaughter. Always awesome. Allie? Atley. Oh, Atley. Yes. Atley June? Okay, that's a, that's a special prayer of thanks. Blessing. And I'll move over here, and now we have another <laughs> light. And how about any prayers on this side? Thankful that Kay is sitting here with us. And how is Jeff? He's doing much better. Um, he's still on oxygen, but he has such wonderful care in Norway. Okay, great. Jeff crowns and... Kay are back, and that was quite the adventure. <laughs> Don't like those adventures. <laughs> okay. I would invite us to be in prayer together, and um, uh, when I conclude each petition with God in your mercy, I invite you to respond with hear our prayer. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of the resurrection for the church, for people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your Son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your Spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make worthy the work of scientists who look to the stars and planets, as well as scientists who look to atoms and molecules. Bring innovation and well-being to humanity through their discoveries. We thank you for their work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and peoples. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, or constant worry. We pray for those who are needing healing and recovery. Open them to receive health and salvation in Christ Jesus through the Spirit's gift of faith. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Comfort those who have suffered agonizing grief and loss as the result of a multitude of school shootings. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Stir imagination and understanding throughout the church 
in the work of poets and theologians and hymn writers. Lead us into new visions and fresh expressions of your presence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in your mercy, respond to our prayers, spoken and unspoken. Renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Just as our music folk shared their gifts with all of us, let us now make our offerings to the work of this church that we might share good news with others. There are several ways that we are taking our offering. One is with a basket in the narthex. Uh, one is you can mail them in to Post Office Box 69, Manitowish Waters, 54545, or you can go online at mw, I think it's right, mwcpc.org, that's right, and you can give, there, there is a way to give through that. So at this point, um, let us unite in a prayer of dedication. May our gifts be used to build your beloved community through our unity in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus, our Christ, 
Amen. And our closing hymn this morning is number 318, In Christ There Is No East or West. And now may the joy of the healer go with us as we move out into the day. May we go out in the unity of God, that we may know God and make God known. Go forth in the love of God. Amen. Amen.